all those definition uh, we already explained it in uh, last class okay so and we also solve this problem right i already show you how to solve it uh, <coughs> it's very easy to solve and already the step by step instruction is given over here okay uh, we start from here today it's saying continuum concept of fluid what is the continuum concept if you uh, look carefully to the word they have a continuum that means something coming from continuous that concept of fluid so what is that concept when you derive the lot of equation we have to make some assumption or some concept for simplification to make our life uh, more easier. So it's saying that mechanical idealization of fluid, that means we consider the fluid is ideal. And what ideal? In terms of mathematical idealization. So it's saying fluid as a continuous distribution of matter. That means there is no empty space or void within the fluid body. For example, <coughs> you are sitting in a room is full of air. So even you take out all the air and your door window is completely sealed then he put some oxygen for example 50 cc oxygen a very small amount but still that oxygen will occupy all the space of the room and assumption is that there will be no empty space or void within the fluid and it's saying as most engineering problem fluid have a large molecule and distance uh, between the molecule is very small. So what is the definition? Mathematical idealization of a fluid as a continuous distribution of matter. There is no empty space or void within the fluid. Why? It's saying the most engineering problem or most analytical solution. When we derive the equation, we'll think that fluid have a large molecule and there is no uh, there is distance between the molecule is very small that's why there is no empty space between the fluid uh, second it's saying as a consequence of continuum assumption for this assumption what will be happen it's saying as a result of continuum assumption is fluid property is assumed to have definite value at every point in a space that means you are sitting in the room, you might have window open. So just by the window, fluid has density. It has a temperature. It has a pressure. <coughs> in other corner of the room, you might have a, a bulb light, right? So temperature of the fluid will be different also velocity and density might be different. So it's saying that fluid properties such as density, temperature, velocity are considered to be continuous function of position and time. That means in a space, if, if you think about the small space of your room or of your living room, and how will identify your living room? obviously they have three coordinate x y and z so dense property of the fluid say you have a, a room if i like to draw a 3d view of your room then right over here you have table you have one density pressure temperature if a window right over here pressure temperature is different so right now say in the room you turn on your laptop 
you know, turn off, uh, turn on light. But after the class, you'll turn off your laptop and light. You might close the window. Then what will be happen? Your fluid property at a particular location will not be same from previous time. That means uh, property of the fluid, it depends on space and time. Space means three coordinate, x, y, z, and then time. The density at a point may vary with time as a result of work done or by the fluid or heat transfer to the fluid. Thus, complete representation of density you can represent by rho equal to function of x, y, z, t. Not only the density, the other property too depends on three value, x, y, z, and t. For example, uh, you have a river. You have a river and water flowing. Say, you taking counting density and temperature of the river water at this location and you counting all over the day that you take data at 8 a.m then again you take data after two hours at 10 a.m 2 a.m and every time you'll see the density is not the same so what does it mean density is function of time you are in the fixed location right there's no x y t but Instead of right over here, first you take data over here. After two hours, you're taking over here. And after two hours of that time, you're taking over here. What does it mean? That means your density also changing in respect to time and also location of your uh, data where you are taking. That means fluid property is function of space and time. So from this slide, you will remember what is the continuum concept of fluid. There is no void or empty space within the fluid. And all the fluid has a, some property and that property has definite value. That means property is not the zero. Like uh, in, you are sitting in the room, even is a, you cannot say that temperature is zero. Obviously, it has some value. Uh, for example, in your room, you are considering a small amount of air inside the room. You might say density is zero, pressure is zero, temperature is zero. No. All the property has finite value, some Uh, right over here, just showing the continuum fluid mechanics. The, it has some branches, like if they talk about uh, fluid with viscosity, then fluid with without viscosity is called in viscid fluid. But in reality, uh, nothing has zero viscosity. Might be the minimum, but obviously all the fluid has some viscosity. Then uh, divided by two branches, compressible and incompressible. Again, in uh, continuum fluid mechanics, there the viscous flow, they have two types, laminar, turbulent, uh, internal, then external. What is internal flow? What is the external flow? For example, you are talking about uh, water flow in a river or canal, that means open channel flow external flow but you talking about the flowing of natural gas inside the pipe that means that is internal flow uh, in our uh, home we are getting water then we are getting natural gas through a internal pipe flow then you have laminar and turbulent and we'll discuss it later on but in our 31005 we'll talk about the viscous flow not the smart the in biscuit, okay? Uh, next topics, uh, 
system control volume and control surface uh, did you take the thermodynamics class so far yes sir okay i think you already learned from there but still i put it over here but sometime we needed to describe our uh, a situation or to derive derive a equation we need to uh, need to know those are just i like to give you the idea or refresh your mind that what is the system a system is defined as a fixed identifiable quantity of fluid that means uh, even fluid quantity is very small but that quantity of fluid you can think is a system the system boundary what happened boundary separate the system from the surrounding the boundary of the system may be fixed or may be movable. However, no mass across the system boundary. Uh, example, you are taking the natural gas for your car. That means boundary is fixed. And the mass, the air from the outside, not able to go inside of your cylinder. Also, natural gas is not coming out. But if your mass is not going, but if your cylinder is not insulated, then heat transfer is going from outside to inside or inside to outside. So this is fixed uh, system. But movable system, if you think about the uh, piston and cylinder, I say then. So when piston moving down or up, that means the volume is not the fixed system boundary is changing. Then what is control volume? Control volume is an arbitrary volume in space through which fluid flow. You can think about a arbitrary space. For example, you have a big window. Now, you like to figure out the velocity or how much air is coming through the window in your room or how much you are getting out through the window how will you figure out mass flow rate <clears throat> like you can say that 2 kg of air is getting out from my window that means 2 kg per second or per minute how will you figure out so in that case you can put some sensor or measure the velocity of the air at different point right then you have the velocity v what is the unit of the v meter per second then you multiply the area area unit meter square so v multiply the area you get the flow rate that we describe with letter q so your q will be a into v and that will be meter q per second this is volume and this meter q per second you multiply by density then you will get the kg the how much air is coming out this is the experimental but there is a other form that you consider a small area of your window and you thinking this is dx distance and height of the small square is dy and so this small area and you thinking the thickness of this small area how much dz then mathematically you derive then you increase the limit that dx vary from 0 to 4 feet and y vary from 0 to 3 feet and z other direction is very 6 inch then mathematically you derive the uh, figure out how much flow is passing through your window <coughs> excuse me so control volume is an arbitrary volume in a space through which fluid flow then control surface it is the geometric boundary of the control volume 
is called control surface. Control surface may be real or imaginary. It may be at rest or in motion. So, it just geometric boundary of the control volume that is called control surface. Right over here it is showing this is control volume and this is control surface. The or you can say control surface or system boundary, right? Uh, you see fluid coming through this end, then getting out from this end. Or this one is control surface, and this one you can say system boundary. And system boundary or control surface right over here is almost same. Okay, uh, second uh, term, fluid particle. Uh, we know we have fluid molecule, right? But when we derive the equation, then we need to think about, we need to start with a small amount of fluid. Then mathematically we derive the equation. So it's saying a infinite small, that means very small lump of fluid that will be a small amount of fluid is called a fluid element or fluid particle, very small amount. A fluid particle assumed to have very small and non-zero dimension. That means it has a dimension. Even you think is very tiny one, very small, still it has a dimension. And the all, it has all the property. So it's a, it's volume delta V, mass delta M, density rho. So rho will be how much? Volume by, mass by volume, density. The shape of the fluid particle, it might be a triangular or a prism, or it might be a cylindrical or spherical, depend on the coordinate system and depends on how you are deriving. So you just remember right over here, the what is the fluid particle and what is the property of the fluid particle? The dimension is non-zero. It has all the property, right? It has a temperature, pressure, and density. Even it is very small, its dimension is not non-zero. It has a dimension, also it has a volume. And what might be the shape of the fluid element? We might think a triangular fluid element a prism or we might think a cylindrical fluid element or spherical fluid element depends on how you are deriving what is you are deriving okay so uh, any uh, question from lecture sheet one so we are finishing lecture sheet one today we'll start the lecture sheet uh, two so anyone do you have any any question about the lecture sheet one? No. Okay. Uh, we can start then lecture sheet uh, two. Are we able to see the screen? Hello? No, sir. No, okay, one second. What about now? Yes, it's okay. showing. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, this one, this chapter in uh, lecture sheet two is called uh, static pressure will figure out that how we can measure the pressure of a fluid and we have some derivation in this uh, chapter uh, since uh, it is called what is the name of the subject fluid mechanics so it have uh, i would say 50 percent math and derivation and in some extent we have uh, definition of some term so right over here i just put 
some rule from engineering mechanics that what is the condition of equilibrium of statics body the, that summation of uh, fx has to be zero summation of fy zero fz will be zero similarly summation of moment all three axes has to be zero then a body will be equilibrium now for dynamic body a body is dynamic that means is moving then summation of force along z axis equal to m into acceleration newton second law similarly along y axis along x axis that summation of force equal to mass into acceleration and this force component you already know that you have a force working along this direction is f then you have x and y axis if you know the angle you can figure out the component along x axis and you can figure out the components along y axis so i think you all know it uh, right over here i put some uh, you know vector equation or some law so you have two vector uh, in fluid mechanics if sometime if you need to talk about the fluid in motion then you need to use the vector so you see a vector a it has three component x uh, axis i y axis unit vector j and z axis unit vector k similarly b over here so how we'll figure out the dot product and cross product of uh, these two vectors that i show it over here other thing what is the dale operator i think you already studied that one in your uh, math so this is called dale operator in fluid mechanics we will use it has a also vector uh, vector i unit vector i along x axis del by del x in this vector j along y axis then del by del y similarly a vector along a z axis and like you like to figure out uh, del s then what will be your equation you will have only s over here that is showing over here del s equal to this one and if you have a dot product of del and v velocity v has a three component u v w and this is a vector and these two vector you like to dot product then you will get del u by del delta x plus del v by del y you have this one and if you like to figure out the cross product say you have a vector a you have del cross vector a and obviously you can uh, go through the three by three matrix and after solving matrix you get this one so after cross product you will have a vector but dot product there is no vector and right over here i just put refresh your mind about some uh, derivation and you have a two function x or p is function of x y then how will figure out the change of p or change of pressure for example in certain place p is function of x y z now how you can figure out the change of pressure so in that case dp equal to del p by del x into dx plus del p by del y plus dy you have one more because i add z then del p by del z into dz so all those things are coming from the math then this one we need it obviously we need sometime those things also integration uh, you just need to remember all those uh, formula okay uh, now we need to learn something in the definition of the fluid you learn that it offer it didn't offer any resistance 
in shear force is continually deform under shear stress, right? But you need to know what is the shear stress, what is the normal stress. So normal stress in the fluid, that means normal force acting per unit area of surface is called normal stress uh, for per unit area. So if I draw a surface of a bucket and say full of water, how much force working in that uh, surface? Force working perpendicular to the surface. So this is normal stress. I will figure out. You need to figure out the area all around the bucket, right? So all around the bucket, if you cut, you get a rectangular cross section. Then how much pressure or stress in the bottom of the bucket? So you will have a circular portion. So you have the figure out the pressure, then you figure out the force, then you figure out the stress. So stress equal to force by area. So <coughs> Normal force acting per unit area of the surface is called normal stress. Normal stress work always perpendicular to the surface or perpendicular to the cross section. Uh, it's same principle in the solid mechanics. You already might know it that you have a rectangular bar. Now you pulling that rectangular bar along this direction, along this direction. Then force per unit area. So what is the cross section? Obviously cross section will be a rectangular. The cross section rectangular, you figure out the cross section, then divided by force, force by area, you will get the stress. Okay? Same thing in uh, fluid mechanics. Shear stress. Shear stress always work parallel to the surface. Okay? The shear force acting per unit area of the surface is called shear stress. A shear stress or parallel to the surface or parallel to the cross section. And we figure out tau equal to Fs by A. What is the A power here? That means shear force. Uh, now, how shear force work in the fluid? you have a bucket of water. So you put your hand, then you rotate your hand for a, so what, what will happen? You take out your hand, fluid will still rotate and it deform. That means at the center, you will see fluid moving faster. At the outer area, fluid is moving slow. So why it is happen? Due to the deformation of the fluid, due to the shear stress or shear force. So what is shear stress or shear force? Or what is the deformation of the fluid? For example, if I think this is a, a fluid element and it remain stable, it's, it's not moving, nothing. Now, by your hand, you push like that. So what will be happen? If we apply force right over here. So what is this force? It is always working parallel to the surface. Even in every side, if you think fluid is working layer by layer, then still in each layer, fluid is, this force is working parallel to the surface. So due to the, this force, fluid element deform. How it is deformed? This point it came in right over here, and this point came in over here. So ultimately, a full element coming like that. It was a rectangular, but it become rhombus, right? So in that case, how we will figure out the deformation rate? The how much it is deformation? So what happened actually? Uh, this mass distance is sense, right? 
and you see if this height of the fluid element distance from here to here is high then this deformation will be also higher if fluid element height is very small then this will be smaller value so this value we can figure out in other way if i think this angle is gamma what will be the <laughs> then gamma you can figure out uh, what is the tan gamma perpendicular by base right so when this is gamma then tan gamma will be perpendicular this value so if this value is x and height is l then you are getting tan gamma equal to perpendicular that means x divided by height l but if angle is very small then tan gamma equal to gamma that means gamma equal to x by l that is trying to show over here and we apply force right over here but right over is showing forces over here working along this direction this is same thing now uh, so this type of deformation is called shear deformation and deformation rate how will you figure out the rate it's saying rate of change in distance between two neighboring point moving with fluid divided by the distance between two point that is change in length per unit length per unit time that is called deformation rate and what is the shear strain shear strain is the angular deformation so you see change in length per unit length per unit time that is called deformation rate so you see fluid element originally it was right over here now after we apply the force is coming right over here right still it seems like this is and if i say this is b a this is b still the line a b equal to this uh, original line right length is same still same that mean what happened right over here only the angular deformation over here that mean only the shear stress like this one but after you apply the force fluid particle right over here it came in right over here this is but this is travel faster become this mass then you see your line become a b is more longer than dc if i think this is e so original line a e it become now line a b that means this mass length is increase so it's a change in length per unit length so what is the change in length over here amount b e is the in length increase of which value of a e so b e divided by original length you will get change of rate of change of length not the rate you can just say rate of uh, not the rate respect to length how much increase or decrease by original length then if this change is happening by a small amount of time from this point to this point it take delta t it divided by delta t then this will be your rate of deformation or deformation rate okay so just take a clear concept that how we can figure out the deformation rate of fluid we need it in derivation we need to understand this stuff okay now we will derive a uh, equation that is called uh, Newton law of viscosity 
So what is Newton law of viscosity? We know the Newton has one famous law, Newton's second law, right? F equal to ma. But in fluid, he has also some law. There is one law is called Newton's law of viscosity. So let's see what uh, we can derive that law. Or what is that law? It's a consider two large plate. The plate, this plate and bottom plate. So we can think that uh, this is plate A, this is plate B and both plate separated by a small distance y and we fill with the some fluid okay and bottom plate is at rest this is not moving is rest on the floor or table and upper plate is moved parallel to the bottom plate with a velocity u and then you try to move this plate so how do you need to move this plate? Yeah, it will move without force? Obviously, no. You need to apply some force to pull that something. So if you apply force A, then you will see it is moving with velocity U. Now, in reality, how you can describe this problem? is same as you running a boat over the water. Uh, what happened in the river? You have a river bed is fixed. River bed is not moving. Then you have a boat. Say you have a boat over here. You have a propeller. So I can think the bottom surface of the boat how look like. Also kind of flat plate, right? So this boat is moving, it's not moving along because it has some propeller, some force you are applying. And distance between river bed and the bottom plate of the boat has certain distance. Might be four feet, six feet, 10 feet, depends on the type of boat and type of river, right? Now, if this height, is gradually decrease. You need to apply higher force or lower force to move the boat. Anyone? Hello? Nobody here? Yes, sir. Okay. So tell me. You can guess? If water height is decrease, then you like to push the boat. You need to apply higher force or lower force? The lower higher force. force. Now you need to apply higher force. For example, <coughs> you put your boat in the river and gradually water height is decreasing due to hot summer weather then say water height coming uh, this much level. So boat was right over here, right now boat is right over here. Say distance between floor of the boat, bottom floor and the river, say six inch or might be four inch. In that case, what will happen? We have only mud, right? So you need to apply higher force. So what do you see? right over here. The force depends on distance from the fixed plate. The bottom is the fixed plate. If that distance is decreasing, then you need to apply higher force. Distance is increasing, you need to apply lower force. Why? In mathematically, everybody will know it. You ask a simple people, even is not engineer, he will say, okay, if water height is decrease, Bangla, Pani Komezawa, then uh, you need to apply lower force because at the bottom there is no water. But mathematically, why? Mathematically, that your water has a viscosity. So if gradually the height is decrease, then 
in the bottom surface water will be more denser it have more viscosity so you like to move you need to apply more force so that amount of force i can say f is inversely proportional to the height right so i can say this height is y right i can say f equal to 1 by y i can say or 1 by s because is when y is decreasing then you need no force and y is increasing then this value will be low then you need to apply lower force other thing you consider that if you like to pull with high velocity you need low force or higher force if velocity increase you like to push faster then obviously you need to apply more force so force also proportional to the velocity u because you like to move slowly you need to apply less force other thing that if the size of the boat is big you need to apply bigger force why what is the reason because the bottom of the boat area bottom area of the boat will be high if we have a bigger size boat right similarly if this plate is too big that means it has a more area then you need to apply more force so i can say that this f is directly proportional to the area. area okay so you see this force ultimately depending on the three parameter on the distance between the plate then velocity then also area of the plate now this three equation i like to express with simple equation or one equation then i can say f equal to uh, proportional to uh, a u divided by y i can mention it right <coughs> so how uh, is derived by newton what he did he figured out by experimental i give you example with a board but he took a plate like he put a fixed plate on the top between uh, then on the top of the plate he put some fluid so fluid obviously it has a viscosity then he tried to pull the plate with different velocity and sometimes he increase or decrease the height then he found this equation this one is saying the force is proportional to a u by y <coughs> now this equation we can simplify a little bit instead of a in the right side i can bring a in the left side i can say a by a equal to u by y not equal to proportional i can say right now you see what is f by a you applying this f parallel to the surface right parallel to the this surface parallel to the also bottom surface so this force work parallel to the surface is called shear force um yeah shear force and if i divided by shear force by the area then we will got shear stress so left hand this equation i can say shear stress tau proportional to u by y that i can mention okay now the what is u by y that mean velocity divided by the by height. height right and this one we can express in uh, small height and small velocity and how we'll do it if you look in the 
this diagram you see uh, why is showing like that a triangular distribution we are showing what is the reason if i think several fluid particle right over here one particle one particle is right over here before you apply force all the fluid particle lying over here right you not moving the plate fluid particle is not moving so what happened when you moving the fluid particle uh, play upper plate with certain force and certain velocity then upper fluid element will stick to the upper plate so he will move with the same velocity of the plate so from here he will came in right over here what about the bottom one this fluid particle because we think that fluid particle always move in a layer this is one layer this is other one gradually you have a layer by layer so in the when bottom one is try to move with him then if below of this they have one more layer he will say hey guy don't move faster if like is stay with me so he will travel less faster that means he'll the same time the upper fluid particle move faster but bottom one move little bit less so he is staying from here to here similarly this one right over here he will move right over here so that means at the same time the distance traveled by fluid element will not be the same and the bottom element he'll say he will not move he will like to stick with the bottom plate so if i make a line then we will get a triangular distribution of distance traveled by the fluid element now i will like to make a line over here this distance i'm taking a small triangle over here and this triangle what happened is similar to the bigger triangle similar triangle so i can figure out some ratio you see this height this height small height from here to here will be how much i'm thinking this height is dy and height distance from here to here this high distance is du now by the similarity rule of the triangle i can say du divided by dy equal to u by y clear i can say this one so originally what we found we found that a by a uh, this is proportional to proportional to u divided by y right or i can say a by a equal to tau so tau uh, proportional to i don't see sign of what a proportional okay proportional to and instead of u by y i can say du by dy that i can say okay okay now if we look in the uh, next uh, slide that we found uh, bigger u by bigger y is du by dy right so let me pick up a we got this one then we know f by a equal to tau so from this right over here we can say that tau proportional to uh, bigger u divided by bigger y or we can say tau equal to du divided by dy now i like to take out this uh, proportionality then our equation will be tau there will be some constant 
right? We are saying this constant is mu. So tau equal to mu into du by dy. That is right over here. So this law tau equal to mu du by dy is called uh, Newton law of viscosity. And this proportional constant, okay. Uh, this proportional constant is called uh, viscosity of the fluid mu, okay. Uh, okay, uh, we, I like to give you a break, just uh, five minutes. Is okay? Yes, sir. Okay, giving you some break, just five minutes, one second. Let me, where is my controlling unit? Okay, let me uh, post the recording.